Nearly 50 years ago, President Gerald Ford made the controversial decision to pardon President Richard Nixon before investigations into Nixon's conduct were complete. It was not a popular decision at the time. Among the majority of Americans who did not think Richard Nixon should have been pardoned was a young congresswoman by the name of Elizabeth Holtzman. But unlike most other Americans who disagreed with Ford's decision, Holtzman was able to press him on it directly about a month after he issued the pardon in front of a House Judiciary Subcommittee and the country. Mr. Ford, you stated that uh, the theory on which you pardoned uh, Richard Nixon was that he had suffered enough. And I am interested in that theory because the logical consequence of that is that somebody who resigns in the face of virtually certain impeachment or somebody who is impeached should not be punished because the impeachment or the resignation in face of impeachment is punishment enough. And I wondered whether anybody had brought to your attention the fact that the Constitution specifically say, states that even though somebody is impeached, that person shall nonetheless be liable to punishment according to law. Uh, Mrs. Holtzman, I was fully cognizant of uh, the fact that the president, uh, on resignation, uh, was accountable uh, for any criminal charges. Uh, but I would like to say that the reason I gave the pardon was not as to Mr. Nixon himself. I repeat, and I repeat with emphasis, the purpose of the pardon was to try and get the United States, the Congress, the President, and the American people focusing on the serious problems we have both at home and abroad. And I was absolutely convinced then, as I am now, that if we had had this series, an indictment, a trial, a conviction, and anything else that transpired after that, that the attention of the President, the Congress, and the American people would have been diverted from the problems that we have to solve. And that was the principal reason for my granting of the pardon. So, oh, Gerald Ford said he pardoned Richard Nixon to spare the country from the embarrassment and distraction of a possible indictment and a trial and a conviction. But he also spared an unrepentant ex-president from justice. And now, as Donald Trump faces felony charges, his sense of invincibility points to the idea of presidential impunity planted with Ford's pardon of, of Nixon half a century ago. Joining me now is the aforementioned former Congresswoman Elizabeth Holtzman of New York, who was a member of the House Judiciary Committee during the Watergate scandal. scandal. She's the author of several books, including The Case for Impeaching Donald Trump, published in 2019. She was also a prosecutor herself. So she knows she, of what she speaks on this. Um, Liz, I don't know when you asked that question back in 1974, whether you were wondering that the influence that would have 50 years later, um, the idea that we are hearing from other presidential candidates that if they become president, more than half of them are inclined to pardon Donald Trump without having heard the evidence, by the way. Hopefully they've read the indictment, but they haven't, they haven't seen any, any case. Well, I knew it was wrong at that time, and I knew it would set a terrible example of presidential impunity. I mean, you could just see with what President Ford said at that time that he's switching his argument. First, it was President Nixon suffered enough. Secondly, it's really the country would be distracted by focusing on Nixon and not the problems of the country. I mean, the fact of the matter is he set a terrible example. He short-circuited the process of justice, and he created for the country a sense of a dual system of justice. His underlings were being, his top aides were then being prosecuted, and they were going to be sent to jail. But Nixon, who did the same things and worked with them and ordered, gave the orders, he was going to be exempt. So the highest and mightiest goes free, but the others don't. And think about the same thing with regard to uh, former President Trump. There are people right now sitting in jail for doing exactly what Trump did. In fact, nothing as serious, because they didn't conceal and obstruct the effort to obtain the classified information. They didn't lie about it. They didn't try to uh, conceal and, and hide. And they're sitting in jail. What argument are we going to tell the American people? A president who does the same thing as any other person 
that those other people can go to jail, but somehow a president is exempt, that's wrong because it sets an example of impunity and it creates the example of Donald Trump who thought he was above the law and thinks he's above the law. I mean, he just said, I, in my mind, I can declassify documents. Well, he also I mean, said that he was entitled to nonsense. those documents. He's misreading uh, statutes. Uh, the, 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 the indictment, 45 pages long, it's actually not that hard to read. It, 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 it's, it's pretty straightforward <laughs> as to what it alleges. I'm puzzled as to why so many people are having trouble with this thing. Uh, I'm just going through a list of presidential candidates, those who have said that they will uh, uh, possibly pardon Trump uh, if they are elected. Vivek Ramaswamy is a Yes, Nikki Haley is apparently a soft yes, even though she says it was he was incredibly reckless with our national security. Larry Elder is a yes. Um, uh, Mike Pence is a, says I can't defend what's, defend what's alleged. Tim Scott has no comment. Ron DeSantis is implied he's a yes. Okay, Asa Hutchinson is a no. Chris Christie is a no. Francis Suarez, who's just entered the race, the mayor of Miami, has said I would use the par pardon power to heal the country. That's an echo of what Gerald Ford said. Does it heal the country to say, let's move on from this ugly chapter? No. First of all, it didn't heal the country then. Gerald Ford was defeated. And I want to tell that to every single Republican candidate who says they want to pardon um, Trump. Ford lost his, his effort to be elected president because of the pardon. And any candidate who's going to support a dual system of justice create a kind of special sort of almost monarchy so that our presidents are beyond the reach of the law, beyond accountability, they will go down to defeat. That's a very powerful lesson. Do not play around with and pander with regard to pardons. That's a dangerous and a wrong thing to do. And it didn't heal the country because we never dealt with the underlying problems of a rogue president, a president who has no guardrails, a president who disobeys the law. We never really came to grips with things that have to be done to prevent that. We still haven't done that with regard to what we found out was with respect to Trump. So, so it's wrong to, to focus on a pardon. Let the criminal justice system work. Maybe, who knows what'll happen? Maybe Trump will plead guilty. Maybe Trump will say, you know, I did something wrong. Maybe he won't be convicted. Maybe the jury will acquit him. Let the process work. He's not a king. We abolished the idea of a king in 1776, and we're not going back. And the Constitution is very clear about it. And Trump, if he, he wants to get reelected, he can't pardon himself either. Some people say the president can pardon himself. Can't do that for the same reason. The Constitution says that president that that whoever that presidents can be punished according to law they can be indicted they right. can be prosecuted they can be convicted well that would be meaningless if a president could pardon himself so that's nonsense trump doesn't have the power to pardon himself and other presidential candidates should be very careful about talking about the pardon because they can go down in the dust just the way Fer gerald ford did